Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. On today's episode, we take a dive into a couple air quote tool hack accessories popular on TikTok or at least watched a lot on TikTok. I rarely know anyone who owns these things and see if they are worth the bandwidth and brief attention spans that they are consuming, all using expensive sensitive testing equipment because this stuff is just fun. Up first, we got the Autry Torsion Torque 3200 Newton meter lug nut remover trans speed labor saving wrench. Totally the sort of thing your grandpa taught you after explaining lefty loosey righty tidy, am I right? 3200 Newton meters would be a full 2,360 foot pounds of torque from a hand crank. Of course, torque multipliers, they're, they're a real thing. They can and do work. We've been meaning to buy a bunch and see if they also hit their crazy high numbers on our massive dyno that can take well into the thousands of foot pounds, but these ain't cheap. Let us know if you wanna see some of those and we'll buy some. Over 2,000 foot pounds from something this size though, Oh, and around 60 bucks too seems a bit far-fetched, which is sort of perfect for a TikTok hack. The idea I imagine they don't go into great detail is this provides you a great mechanical advantage, allowing you to remove lug nuts on the roadside or wherever with less effort and be on your way without a sweat. When you pop open one of these, you'll find perhaps unsurprisingly to those of you way ahead of me here, a planetary gearbox, specifically a double planetary gear reduction. Just two planet gears on each stage this is set up as a 16 to one ratio, probably not any higher for size and cost reasons, and to maybe not bust it into pieces from torque multiplication. But it did say 2300 some odd foot pounds. Theoretically, you would put, let's say 50 pounds on this six inch long lever. That's 25 foot pounds of torque, which equates to a cool 400 foot pounds out the business end. Theoretically, with zero mechanical losses and a perfectly made gearbox. And this thing isn't looking quite like a Swiss watch inside but we've been surprised before. Here's the dyno set up for reverse calibrated with a torque wrench. It does have a neighboring bolt for the reaction arm to work with, but not exactly ideal setup here. Let's see what it can do. So this thing wants to move around, so it's hard to keep it planted onto this bolt head. All right, so let's give it another shot with some retrofitting to keep that reaction arm planted. And that's 190, 195-ish foot-pounds. That's about as much as I could muster with considerable effort. Like way more effort than I would be normally spending to take off a lug nut with a normal hand tool. Here's a breaker bar which you might normally use loosening what the hand crank just did. So yeah, much better and breaker bars are what, like 20 bucks. Now all that said, can it be used for lug nuts? Let's take a more practical, less scientific look at it. Well, yes, it can, but does it feel like a powerhouse while using it? That'd be a solid no. The product page says 2,360 foot pounds and also 800 Newton meters, which would be 588 foot pounds. It feels more potentially capable of the 195 we showed, if you're willing to wrestle with it, basically. So 16 to one, perhaps in ratio on paper, but it's not gonna be doing that in real life. You're fighting for each one of those foot pounds. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is this can't be used to tighten your lug nuts. Due to using a reaction arm like most torque multipliers when using these to put back on the wheel you just took off, once tight, it's good and stuck. Which isn't a crime in itself, but think about it. The people selling this tool assume you have, well, you must have another wrench, some type of ratchet, a tool to tighten your lug nuts up to 100 plus foot pounds to put your wheel back on. Which if that's the case, you own one of those tools, why are you buying this? Use the thing you are going to use to install the wheel to just loosen it. It should do at least as well as this does. It's kind of a waste of materials, no doubt most of these end up in landfills. Hack not approved, moving on to this little tool and let's take a look. The impact wrench you've always needed is the drill you already own. What if that's my drill? That one's loose.
It's an adapter that turns a drill into an impact wrench to the effect that a hand drill can remove 100 foot pound lug nuts. Or so it would seem. This particular one is made by Mastercraft, which is sold in Canada. So we don't have them here in the States, which means ours was provided by a genuine Canuck in the form of YouTuber Some Guys Garage, a channel I watched before this exchange, and you can tell he's a genuine Canadian because his package came with an authentic bottle of maple syrup, which the daughter extra appreciated. Thanks for that. What's cool about this particular one is it's larger than most and it's adjustable in its spring tension, which is sort of a good idea really, depending on your tasks at hand or the power of your drill, you can increase or decrease the spring tension on the hammer assembly inside. Now these have been around for ages, maybe you've seen one, including this Mastercraft that is now discontinued but originally sold for 40 bucks. There's videos on similar drill adapters going back 12, 15 years on YouTube, but you'll always see these rinky dink drills on them. Do you remember what battery drills were like 15 years ago? Because I do, they sucked. Well, they worked really, but compared to the monsters of today, they pale in comparison. Let's see if the adapter's up to the task of modern drills. Now running this thing by hand, whether that's using my grandpa's old hand drill or one we bought specifically for this purpose was a no-go. Even with the spring tension adjusted all the way out, so there's certainly more spring and mass going on in this one's design than the one on TikTok as it can't be run by hand. Hopefully that means more beans. Here's our five second working torque test with the top of the line DeWalt DCD 999 drill in low because we pumped the hammer spring all the way up and not sure what it requires now. One hundred and thirteen foot pounds, not exactly what we're looking for. All right, but it's not stellar. Here's in high with a Milwaukee 2704, which is not too long ago their top drill. So not the latest, but also much more recent than the type of drills that existed when these adapters hit the streets. Two hundred and sixty nine, not bad, like reaching into mid torque type levels of beans in this test length, but not quite my tempo. We have a bit of experience hopping up hammer mechanisms that are not our design with different power sources, and the key has always been speed. Speed with enough power to maintain that speed against a hammer and spring, and when it comes to high speed and power at that high RPM, the 3 speed DCD 999 is among the best. Here's the DeWalt in adapter versus its closest impact wrench competition on screen. Four hundred and sixty seven foot pounds. And in case that doesn't sound impressive, that's just above a DCF 891, the most powerful mid torque on the market by far, and just under a Craftsman V20 half inch high torque, which is insane. This thing slaps. So we're going to cut it open and take a look inside with 10,000 frames per second high speed camera. But first, we're going to see what it can ultimately do maxed out in our best case scenario 15 second test. Here it is up against its closest competition. Five hundred and seventy five, a little less potent in reverse coming in between the crazy DCF 891 mid torque and the second most powerful mid torque out there, the 40 volt XGT Makita. This is like entry level brushless high torque power from a $40 drill adapter. Needless to say, we were expecting performance closer to the hand crank as far as levels of impressiveness goes. All right, let's take a look inside this thing, then try to loosen some big stuff. It's plastic housing makes for an easy surgery process, always nice, and inside you probably wouldn't be surprised to find, yes, a spring and cam impact mechanism like you'd find in cordless impacts. The anvil size and design doesn't look like anything special, it's pretty old school in fact, but the hammer size, and that's mostly a solid hammer, is way bigger than you might expect for something that's supposed to be driven by a cordless drill, especially a decade ago. This has got some beef to it. The spring is decently sized, not massive if we're comparing it to high torques, but the beauty is you can adjust that spring tension by threading down this collar, squeezing up that spring. And this is how the whole assembly works in real time first. The tension on that spring is built until the hammer is forced up and over the anvil dog to slap into the next one, but this happens with the drill, like the DeWalt, just over 2,000 times per minute. 
Now here it is in forward at around 2500 frames per second. You can see how efficiently it's moving and hitting for a mechanism not meant to be paired with this specific drill or really this power level or RPM. Now notice the spring here, it's bunched up and forcing that hammer forward as it gets bound up and releases that tension each time. We measure this as more hammer speed than a M18 high torque. And here's in reverse at nearly 4000 frames per second. You can see how the hammers at times hit the top of the anvil dogs before seating again, interrupting that rhythm sort of and maybe a bit of frictional loss of energy as well. Not sure if that's just the direction the spring is installed versus how it's loaded, but it's sort of behaving like a Metabo HPT triple hammer impact driver in that way a bit. But unlike any other factory impact where you're just stuck with how it's behaving, we could simply have, had we known while we were using it, ratcheted the spring adjustment back a little bit so that hammers push forward less rapidly and adjusted this behavior out of it, which is kind of the beauty of this design. I know I'm waxing poetic about a little silly $40 discontinued tool made popular on TikTok, but this thing is sort of genius. As we've learned with these sort of abominations we've created, speed is the way to juice up any given hammer size. A lot of our viewers have just assumed that's from hitting more often, and that is half the puzzle, but more RPM also means more hammer speed with each blow, it's accelerated off of that hammer into the dog faster. And if you can't increase this part of the equation, increasing this part is just as good. So really the limitation of this equation has always been the spring. In our chainsaw hacked up railway gun, we maxed out the spring in this gas railroad construction gun, which sort of means the end of the road unless we want to build an all new impact from scratch. And the reason the hammer spring in your tool might not be super spicy out of the box is twofold. One, cordless impacts have to work with really any battery. An M18 impact someone buys bare can't just not operate when you put your little 1.5 amp hour battery on it. People would try to warranty the tool. And two is trigger control. People want to impact on a lug nut without destroying it like it's some type of on off switch. So the hammers are typically quite heavy and the springs are sort of meh. But what if they built an impact mechanism up front that was tuned for wide open throttle, high output batteries and all, then gave you an adjustment collar to take spring out of it and ratchet things back for working on less rusty stuff or using like weaker batteries. That's clearly what this thing did to be able to work on anyone's drill that are typically higher in RPM than comparable impacts. And here's this thing versus one and a half inch lug nuts that haven't been moved in forever. And this is it removing 500 foot pounds. I wish adapters this spicy were still around. Let me know if you guys want to see them as well. I think we could probably convince it to be made again. But also I'd really just love to see an adjustable spring tension high torque with the top setting for like Honda crank bolts that won't even work with partial throttle or smaller batteries, I think that'd be sweet. And then you could ratchet it back for more sensitive stuff. Thanks to some guy garage for loaning us this, visit him in the link below. Appreciate you joining us for this one. We make stuff like this at least every Friday. Click subscribe to follow along for that. And thanks for watching.